I am very pleased to be welcoming this year's winning team in the case competition. We are really in for a treat. Before I introduce them, I want to go ahead and share a little bit of context about the case competition prompt and about our work with Warren People Analytics. So a bit about Teach for America. We are in a dire moment in our education system. Far too many of our kids are not well academically or emotionally. There are massive inequities within our schools across lines of race, family income, ableism, and many, many, many other things. The teaching profession has historic teacher burnout and teacher shortages. And the education system as a whole is outmoded. The people work, but the system does not. At Teach for America, we are seeking to change this by bringing outstanding, equity-minded leaders into classrooms to teach for at least two years, and then to work lifelong to alleviate the conditions that create these challenges. Here in Philadelphia, as just one example, we are actively working to triple the number of teachers that we are bringing locally, both in partnership with the school district and multiple charter networks across the city. There are stories like this across every one of the communities that we work in. For us as Teach for America, the stakes are incredibly high that we identify all of the individuals uh, who can be successful in this extraordinarily challenging context. We have a long-standing partnership with Warren People Analytics. This is our third case competition. We've used insights from earlier case competitions, one involving how we think about who we bring to an interview, another involving how we decide where we place our teachers um, to make significant evolutions within our program. And I'm excited about what we will take from this year's case competition finalists. In the prompt this year, we asked participants how we could use information available at the time someone applies to improve retention through every element of our funnel and completion within the core. We asked folks to consider how this might inform who we bring to an interview, a topic we've looked at before, but also to look at the funnel at large. And importantly, we asked teams to ensure that their solutions would account for candidate quality and geographic need. Each of the finalist teams did truly impressive work. There was a lot to learn from each of their, uh, each of their recommendations, and I want to thank Prasad Sethi, I don't see Prasad right now, he's in here somewhere, um, for his generous gift to award prizes to the top three teams. That means a ton. So this year's team from the University of Southern California stood out by using truly multifaceted statistical techniques to generate a robust set of solutions that were both rigorous and extremely pragmatic and practical. They did an extraordinary job. So please join me in a moment to welcome this team. We have Sarah Park, uh, KK Tatananapun, Puja Guntar Satananin, Prina Sanjay Kochari. Please welcome them. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. We are extremely thankful and grateful to the Wharton School of Business and Teach for America to provide us with this opportunity to present our case in this conference. So we are Team Dasara, and I would like to introduce ourselves once again. Sara, KK, Pooja, and myself, Prerna. We are here to present our case on increasing the probability of interviewed candidates for TFA who can complete the program for two years as COPS members. So first, we would like to provide an overview of our approach. Then we would present the key findings and analysis, explain our decision tree model, and then the suggestions and actionable insights that we provided. Every candidate's application goes through a series of stages, and we classified them into two categories. 
from P0 to P3, there was the, the, this was the category which involved the interview process and the acceptance to the TFA. This was completely under the jurisdiction of TFA team. From P4 to P6 was the acceptance of the offer and completing the program for two years, and this was done by the COPS members themselves. So first, we identified the characteristics of those COPS members who completed the program for two years. Then we identified the gap analysis, the COPS members who were invited for the interview by TFA but did not complete two years, and those who actually completed the two years. And finally, we provide our recommendations and what-if analysis. Now KK will talk about our decision tree model and the key findings. Thank you, Prerna. First, based on the applicant who got accepted to the program, we look back into their application data and we found the most important variable which contribute to the completion of the program is the number of days they spend on the application on the left side, we found that the more days they spend on the application, the more likely they will complete the program. The relationship also holds the same for the completion of the interview. The more time they spend, the more likely they will complete the interview. Next, we look into the GPA and the selectivity of the school during the undergraduate from the applicants. And on the left side, we found the negative relationship between GPA and the completion of the program. The less GPA, the more likely they will complete the program. And we also found a subset of group with high GPA and also from high selective school on the bottom right, the red zone, which are the least likely to complete the program within two years. Looking into the interview part, we found the opposite things. GPA now doesn't matter, and we found the relationship from selectivity and the completion of the interview with the more selective of the school, the more likely they will complete the interview. The last thing we look at is the major of the applicants during the undergraduate school. We found the top three majors, which are the least likely to complete the program, which are engineering, mathematics, and business. These three math-related Major are less likely to complete the program, and they are also the least likely to confirm the offer after they got accepted to TFA. Based on the three variables we have discussed, combining with other data from TFA, we have created a decision tree model predicting which group of applicants who are the most likely to succeed in the program, which are the ones who spend at least two days on the application, GPA less than 3.5, and the major other than mathematics, engineering, and business. Yet, when we're trying to look down in terms of why, like why these metrics, why does it matter, we have no idea. <laughs> That's why we would like to keep it as the decision tree instead of more complicated model like random forest, gradient boosting, and stuff. We would like to keep the model to be interpretable for TFA, and we would like to let them apply to their rule-based system. Also, they may need to adapt the model to the other objective that they may have, like the quality of teaching, the leadership, and stuff. Next, I will let Sarah discuss more about our recommendation that we gave to TFA. Thank you, KK. So based on what KK said, I'd like to more detailed recommendations that hiring course based on our analysis. So we have three insights from our inside data and one from external sources. So when it comes to days before submit, we would like to recommend use this one as new criteria when they are approaching the applicants who are working on application but not submitted and then the, when, or inviting the applicants to the interview. When it comes to the other three things, we will provide some specific like, suggestion from the next page. So what KK said, uh, mid, low mid GPA from more and most selective schools are lower to this program, but based on our analysis, actually like high GPA people were more likely to be invited from Teach for America. 
That's why we categorize the group of people who completed the interview and the program when we spot the green area who is loyal to this program. So let's go to the next page to check the result of our new criteria. So the left, right, okay, the left graph for you, uh, we calculated how many applicants Digital for America could have with our new criteria um, the, from a group of people who were actually rejected. So we can say based on our model and the suggestion, they could have 60% more applicants like, in the future processes, and also the percentage of completing program also as fairly high as you can see on the heat map. So let's turn our attention to the major right now. So the three majors, business, math, tech, and engineering, they dropped the program most, but like 50% of them are them were assigned as a math teacher. But math is like a subject which is struggling for the teacher shortage in America. That's why our team would like to recommend hiring more applicants who are majoring in physical science. Here is two solid reasons. The first one, 99% of them uh, have a STEM as a minor. As math is an important like, background of the STEM-related major, that's why we think that they are eligible to teach a math in school. And the second one, when the physical science majoring people are assigned as a math teacher, they were more likely to complete a program comparing to other three majors. So here we have a cute emojis. Like the physical science as a math teacher could be a great solution and love for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> lastly, as Teacher for America is a nonprofit organization, we're thinking about like how can we solve, uh, how can we contribute to solve the problem the teacher shortage in America. So we think about Teacher for America never know like corps major and reason preferences before the interview. So we would like recommend making a new process about only specialized and teacher shortage area. So we can ask the applicants to pick the top three preferred reasons in America. And once they get accepted by Teach for America, they only compare with the applicants in that application process. So we sure that we think that maybe the percentage of dropping the program will be reduced because they know where to work and where to teach. Uh, on the financial benefit, we live as an option, but we highly recommend um, applying the beneficial financial benefit to the applicants because it can attract more applicants who um, the area which is in high demand. So before ending our presentation. We would love to share, like shortly share, top three potential risks that Teach for America could face. The first one is process limit. Uh, I mentioned previous slides, they never, the Teach for America never know about the reason and preferences, reason and subject preferences of applicants, so it could be better they ask before the, like, before, for the application stage. The second one is diversity. As a teacher, it's really important to be a related student, but as we have different education background and culture background, sometimes it's really hard to understand the student. The last one is a salary gap. Teacher and a high paying salary job. So people, uh, students want to go with a high paying salary job, so it could be a potential threat to lose our course like in a Teach for America. So that brings me to the end of our conversation. Uh, uh, presentation. So here we have my teammates again. We are, ha we are happy to have feedbacks and questions from all of you guys here. And thank you today. <laughs>